the biggest, baddest bat you can imagine turns out to be a hugger. My favorite science story this week is a bat story. And it's not just any bat. It's like my white whale of bats. This is the bat I have wished for every time I've gone mist netting in the tropics ever since day one. I mean, I've netted in Costa Rica, Belize, Ecuador, Panama, Peru, Mexico, all of those countries have this bat in it, but they're super rare throughout. In fact, once in Trinidad, I rode with Jerry Carter in the back seat of a car with some guys who work for the government. We rode for like two hours to the south of Trinidad to look inside a hollow tree on the off chance that some bats were still there that these guys had seen like 20 years before. The bats were not there. We rode all the way to this roost, looked in the tree, nothing there. In fact, the hole had healed on the tree. Anyway, uh, and then we rode in the car all the way back. But I still, I've never seen this bat. Here's a picture of my friend Enrico Bernard in the Amazon holding one of these things. I am so jealous of this picture. The bat has an almost one meter wingspan when both wings are held out. It's huge. It eats birds. It eats rodents. It eats smaller bats. I mean, this thing is awesome. And its name is Vampirum Spectrum. Here are some great pictures by Jose Gabriel Martinez Fonseca. Just really captures how gorgeous this bat is. And here are a couple of pictures by Brock and Sherry Fenton, just showing, first of all, how good looking this bat is, the forward facing eyes, because it's a hunter. And then look at that mouth, eh? So this is I mean, what a bat. Can you imagine? The next best thing to catching these bats and seeing them myself is finding a great paper about them that describes what they do in detail and even shows a video. And that's the paper I want to share with you. This paper just came out in PLOS One. Three researchers found a roost of these bats, four of them living in a tree, and just set up a camera and recorded videos to see what these bats do with their time. And what they found is really cool. So I'm just going to show you some highlights from their videos and uh, let you enjoy the glory of these bats. Here's the first one. So you're looking up into the tree roost. You can see two bats close to the camera. And uh, one of them has a mouse or some other rodent that it's caught. And look, it just handed it over to the other bat. So this is a colony of four bats living together. And this is something they saw quite a bit of is that one bat would come back with food and then they would give it to another bat without any kind of fight. And when they measured the distance between the eyeballs of the bats, it was always a bigger bat giving the food to a smaller bat. So they infer that this is parents giving food to the young. Unfortunately, they didn't mark the individual, so they don't know who's who exactly. Okay, here's a different video and this one's labeled play. So I like to think this is the two babies closer, the two young ones close to the camera. Um, might not be. Look at them. Looking around with their cute ears, yawning oh, or stretching your mouth, whatever you're doing. And then they start doing the things that siblings do when they're cute and smart and predators that play with each other. I mean, this is like lion cubs. Anyway, um, what the researchers think is that these young lived with their parents, one of them for at least a year and a half and one of them for at least two and a half years. That's pretty crazy. I mean, a North American little brown bat, uh, it weans after five weeks and then it's gone. It, it's not roosting with its parents anymore. So for these two bats to hang out with their parents that long means there's something special happening in that family. Anyway, this video is what they called play. And this is the third video and it's the last one I'll show you, but watch what happens when a bat comes home. So this bat at the bottom here has just arrived. It's going to hike its way up the tree towards where the other two bats that are home right now are hanging. And this is something they saw in all the videos and it, it makes me want to cry. It's so sweet. Watch this bat. So it, it gets home. It hikes all the way up. There are the other two. And this is a family. They've lived together for years. And what do they do when they get together? They hug. Look at this. They really do. They wrap their wings around each other. And look, the other one's like, I want in. And then it gets in there too, and they all have a big family hug. That is the cutest thing I have ever seen. I mean, I'd read descriptions about how these bats maybe wrap a wing around the other one. That's been described in this species uh, from an, a casual observation of somebody who kept one in a cage. But, I mean, come on. The fact that these bats hug. 
Oh, I mean, it kills me. It kills me. It makes me want to go hug my kids. Anyway, uh, I love this paper. Uh, I love just a good description of natural history and what these bats do in their own time. I mean, I really respect that the researchers didn't get in there and put tags on them so they could tell which was which. They did it the hard way. They set up their camera. They changed the, the SD card and the batteries every week. And they just collected a ton of data over the course of three months. And kudos to them. Great paper. Really exciting. And gives us a better insight into what makes these bats so special because obviously they're special. And maybe someday I'll see one. But in a way, it's not about me. These bats are just really cool. Anyway, that's my favorite science paper this week. I've got four others that I would like to share with you. The only way to find out about those ones is to sign up for my weekly newsletter. Just go to followthebatsignal.com.